All right, in this video, we're gonna go over the audiometer console, all the buttons, how to change them, what they do, so let's get started. We'll start at the top. This is the patient response bar. If the patient is able to hear the tone played, they'll respond by pushing a button or raising a hand. Since we don't have a virtual button to push or a hand to raise, this box will flash a golden color if the patient was able to hear the response. The golden flash indicates that the patient heard the tone. The console is divided into channel 1 and channel 2, which are essentially mirrors of each other. Typically, channel 1 is used as your stimulus channel, and channel 2 is used as your masking channel. So channel 1 will default to your appropriate transducer and stimulus type, and channel 2 defaults to a narrow band noise for pure tone masking. On the left for channel 1 and on the right for channel 2, you'll see the volume settings. The slider changes the actual volume of the tone you hear. If you turn on masking and it's a little annoying for you, you can just adjust the level on the slider so that it's comfortable as you're practicing. The number in this box indicates what the decibel level is in dBHL. This is also plotted on the audiogram at the top by the cursor where you can see that we're presenting a stimulus at 30 dBHL. If you raise the level by clicking up, you'll notice that the cursor with the crosshair cursor increases in level by going down on the audiogram uh, to 45 and that matches what it says down here. You can decrease the level with the down arrow to go back to 30. Now's a great time to point out that all of these buttons have associated hotkeys. If you hover over any of these buttons, you'll see a little description of what the button does along with the hotkey that does it. We strongly recommend learning and using these hotkeys. It makes the testing a lot easier. So for example, we can see here that the down arrow will decrease the level and the up arrow will increase the level and page up will increase the masker level if you look at channel two and page down will decrease the masker level if you look at channel two. Moving from the outside to the inside, you see an on off button. The on off button changes the default state of the audiometer. If no tone is playing, turning that on will play the stimulus continuously. Clicking it again will turn it off. This is really useful for masking, where you would turn on the masker to be constantly on while you perform the pure tone testing. You'll notice when we turn on the masker that the masking cursor appears. So the on off button changes it to continuously on or continuously off. The present button only turns on the audio, turns on the sound from channel one or channel two only for the duration of holding down the button. So this is how you're gonna present your tone. If you hold it, click and press present, it will present a tone as long as you keep your button pressed down. When you release the button press or release the click, it will stop playing the tone. This is typical for an audiometer where they have a present button that plays the tone while you hold down. The keyboard shortcut for this is spacebar, which is very convenient. In between on, off, and present, you have your ear selector. Right now, you can choose between presenting the stimulus and the masker and the right and left ears, and you can tell when we change those, you switch from one ear of the audiogram to the other. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts L for left ear, R for right ear, or E for toggle between ears. The next column of radio options shows the different stimulus settings. The top option is a constant pure tone. The second option down is pulsed pure tone. The third option down is a frequency modulated tone or a warble tone. SP stands for speech stimuli. This is the tone, or this is the stimulus that you'll select in order to choose speech testing like SRT, WRS, and a passage for MCL, UCL, or SDT testing. NBN stands for narrow band noise masker, which is the stimulus that you would use to mask for pure tone testing. The next column over shows your transducer. This is how you're gonna deliver the stimulus that you selected in the last column to the patient. TDH is a sample super oral headphone. ER3A is a sample insert earphone. HDA is a sample circumaural earphone, and the B71 is a sample bone oscillator. 
The settings associated with each transducer can be changed in the settings tab and we won't go over that in this video, but we will have other videos that discuss those. You can change the ear, stimulus, and transducer for channel 1 and channel 2 independently, making this an essentially two-channel audiometer simulation. In the middle column, you can change the frequency using the drop-down list, and you'll see that when you change the frequency, it updates the cursor position on the audiogram. You can also use the left and right arrows to go between the different frequencies. Note when you get to 8000, it wraps back around to 250. The save button will save a threshold at the current cursor for the current transducer and ear. For example, we're in the right ear in channel one with bone conduction, and so we're going to save that threshold. If we switch to air conduction and save the threshold, we'll save a different symbol. So before you save a threshold, make sure that you're in the right ear and using the correct transducer, air, or bone conduction before you save. The three buttons at the bottom of the middle column are for saving specialty types of responses. NR stands for no response, which indicates that you got to the limits of the audiometer and the patient never responded. VT is for vibrotactile, which depending on your settings may or may not happen. If a vibrotactile response occurs, the screen will alert you that the patient felt the response, but that they didn't hear it. MD represents a masking dilemma. This occurs when you need to mask, but you're not able to because of limitations of the configuration and the transducer that you're using. So that covers all the buttons on the audiometer. I hope that this is a helpful overview for you as you start to navigate Theta. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.